Fiat 500. I'm not going to say I came into this review open-minded. I didn't, because I've driven a Fiat 500 once before, and I hated it with a passion. To be honest, driving it again, knowing that I was doing a review on it, it's not as bad as I thought, although it is still pretty shit. Let's talk about the thing that wound me up the most, and this, this is a genuine design flaw, as far as I'm concerned. It's been done purposefully, but it's terrible. So, if you look here, when you're indicating to turn right, the right indicator comes on, and when you turn the steering wheel right, ticks, and then when it goes back, it cancels, like every other car. If you indicate to go right and turn left, it stops indicating, immediately. Why? This, this is so annoying. So if you're going up, let's say you drive on the right-hand side of the road, and you're going up to a roundabout and you're turning left, you turn on the left indicator, but you start turning right to go round the roundabout. And it turns off. It just turns off immediately. I've been going round roundabouts, fighting with this indicator stalk to make it actually indicate the way I'm going. This is unbelievably stupid and really bloody annoying. I, I, I do not understand why this is a thing. I've never seen this on a car before. What? Why did they do this? I don't. I don't understand. Anyway, let's talk about the internal styling for a second, because I think this is one of the only redeeming features about the car. I think it looks pretty cool. I genuinely do. I, I really like the internal of this. It's different. It's kind of funky. It's got chrome pretty much everywhere, and I like chrome. I like the cream as well, even though I don't like the external cream Fiat 500s. The internal looks pretty cool. I think it looks pretty neat and tidy. You can tell it wears though. You can see it get dirty and you can tell the chairs get dirty as well. Normal use and the wear shows more readily due to the fact it's all cream. The chrome is already wearing as well. So maybe long term this isn't the best interior, but for the time being as a new car or a fairly new car, I think it looks great. I, I really like the internals of this. The downside is it's not very comfortable. So, you know, short trips around town, I think is a good little get around, but I did a fair amount of motorway mileage on this and it was not comfortable, not for long distances. There's no armrest in the middle, which is a big bugbear of mine and cars that don't have that. It just makes drives more uncomfortable. The seats so clearly just a bit of foam, you know, there, it's fine. Long distances, you're gonna get a bad back. Yeah, speaking on that actually, the steering wheel, look at this, the steering wheel hardly moves. So you can't bring it towards you or push it away from you it just goes up and down this ridiculous amount like how, how does this help me this does not help me who would have it up anyway the seat goes all the way back so you know the seat moves a good distance tall people can probably drive this pretty comfortably and yet the steering wheel hardly moves i don't know to be fair at the best of times i don't really fit in cars very well but for such an expensive car You'd have expected the steering wheel to come closer to you or further away from you if you wanted it. Another thing about the chair is instead of raising or lowering, you can't really see it in this video, the chair tilts. So in, instead of going down, it just tilts your bum lower and your knees higher, which I don't really understand. I think it's probably also just cheaper to make. So for an expensive car, they've cut a lot of corners. The next thing to talk about though is the power, you know, the speed. It is shocking how slow this car is, genuinely shocking. You'd be in second gear, moving already, you know, you're going about 20 miles an hour and you need to accelerate suddenly for whatever reason. And it just doesn't, it literally doesn't. In order to get any semblance of acceleration, even when you're moving at normal traffic speeds, you pretty much have to go into first gear, which is not really something I've experienced before. A lot of these types of cars, you know, the cheaper, weaker cars, first gear is to get the car moving. You know, it only really works when the car's stationary. If you put a Volkswagen Fox into first gear when you're going 20 miles an hour, that's going to be very unsmooth. You know, you're going to be jerking all over the place. But in this, if you try and pull away in second when you're doing any sort of speed, nothing happens. Absolutely nothing. It, it's genuinely unsafe. It feels genuinely unsafe. Having to go into first gear all the time is pretty bloody annoying as well. Makes a lot of sense why this has a reputation for being a car daddy buys his privileged little girl as it's stylish, has amenities, and is slow. Very, very slow. But it has everything you need if you're a 17-year-old rich girl who wants something that looks cool and doesn't have a need for speed. You know, fair enough. 
This one blows my mind. The accelerator seems to stop, but if you push harder, it keeps going. It's like a block. There's there's something that's been designed there that makes it go so far, stop, and then you have to push extra hard for it to go all the way. As if there's some sort of extra power there. I know some BMWs kind of do this. You know, there's there's more power when you push it, but with this, there doesn't there's nothing. Nothing's there. Why have they done this? Why have they spent time making the pedal do this when literally nothing happens? There's, there's no power to give when you get to this point. What are they trying to achieve? I, d I do not understand this one. It really annoyed me. Boot space is not good. You're not getting any pets in there, but if all you use your boot for is the weekly shopping, you'll be fine, I guess. Comes with a spare tyre, little kit. The rear seats do go forward, and they're actually pretty easy to move forward, which is very handy. You know, a lot of cars, it's a bit of a nightmare. It's a bit full on to try and move the seats down. But in this car, there's two little levers. Pop one, pop the other, the whole thing tilts forward. This design is pretty good. Oh, oh, no, it's not. The Fit 500 is a well-known car, so everyone has an opinion on how it looks. But they're almost always white or cream. But I think it looks pretty good in black, like this car. I've not seen many in black. Like, I actually kind of like it. I think it looks quite cute. I know it's quite bubbly, but I'm starting to really like small cars. Nowadays, most cars seem to be SUVs or 4x4s. They're all massive, so it's nice to have a genuine small car. And I think it looks cute. I think it looks good for it. I do quite like how this looks. I guess the thing you've got to consider is what do you want in a car? And if what you want is something stylish, probably something safe, this will do. You know, okay, maybe more than it will do. If you genuinely like how this looks and you don't care about much else, go for it. I have no complaints. It's got cruise control. That's pretty nice. If you're a wealthy dad and you're looking to buy a car for your daughter and you've come to this video and you don't want her going fast, go for it. I think it looks great. She'll be able to take Instagram pictures of it and of her in it and get loads of likes. Also, and here's something you'll be interested in, the sun visor on the driver's side doesn't have a mirror. Perfect. Means your daughter won't be doing her makeup while she's driving. Now that is safety. And I guarantee that has been done on purpose due to the demographic of the people that buy this car. If you care about anything else when it comes to buying a car, this isn't the car.